Thank you guys for tuning in to the Dope Vision Spirits Podcast. It's your boy, Frank Nate. I'm back for another episode. I got a special guest with me today. I, mean, I know you guys are going to enjoy it. You know, this is the Trap Queen. I've been knowing her for a while now. She's a great person. She's a great mother. She's a mentor to a lot of different people. And I just love her energy. So infectious. She's a beautiful, she has a beautiful soul. And I hope you guys really enjoy the gem that she's going to be dropping today. One half of the, the co-founder of Trap Art, Miss Amina. Mina, talk to us. Tell us how you're feeling hey, today. Hey, Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me on and thinking of me. I'm honored. So thanks for having me here. Absolutely. And I'm feeling good. You know, it's midweek, um, halfway through the week, one week left of school before Christmas break. We have a very intense countdown going on over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great halfway through the week. Um, cannot complain about anything. Absolutely. I know, I, know, I know you're the mother of four, you know, four beautiful kids, two girls and two boys. You guys kind of outpaced me. I, I kind of stopped at the girl, the two girls, and I was like, ah, I think I'm done. And you guys kind of outpaced me. So how does it feel being a mother of four and being a businesswoman at the same oh, time? Well, honestly, sometimes it is it is kind of like unbelievable. Sometimes I literally look at them and I'm like, oh, my God, like Jesse and I will look at each other and be like, we really have four kids. It's crazy. Um but no, I mean it's a blessing. It's it's amazing. It's it's challenging. It it's frustrating. It's all of those things. It's a it is a beautiful struggle. <laughs> it is it is a beautiful struggle. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and and working you know with with them is is difficult um, because Mars, my one year old, is in this stage where like he will find me on my laptop. And he likes to just like, so if I'm sitting on a higher chair, he'll climb on me and he will take his whole hand and just like hit the keyboard. So <laughs> luckily there's like, it's like, it's time to get off. Really, there's like back buttons and things. Cause he'll like delete half of a spreadsheet. Like he does all kind of stuff right now. That's intense. But, um, I mean, I feel like Jesse and I do a great job of, um, of just trying to like plan out when we need to work. And that actually works really well because it's like, you know, that you have this amount of time to do something um, because one of us has to watch the kids when one of us is working. So um, <laughs> it works because at least I, I can't really afford to procrastinate that much because I know that I have this block of time to do this. Yep. Um, and I found myself like that a lot of times, too, is like when I have a, a block of time, I know I need to get something done. I don't procrastinate. I just kind of like go and attack it and get done with it versus having a lot of free time. And you just like, oh, I get to it and you just kind of never really get to it because you always think, oh, I have time. Then you come down to the last minute like, oh, I need to get this done. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like I'm actually way more productive um, and more organized with four kids. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, like I said at the beginning, like, you know, you guys have been, you know, been great to me. And I want to say thank you to you guys for being, you know, so awesome to me and being so, you know, welcome to me. Because, you know, when I came to the Bay, you know, I really didn't have any family or anything like this. And you guys have welcomed me into you guys' family. You guys invite me over quite a bit. You know, I see the kids. We've been growing up with the kids. I love it. And just being having that family atmosphere has been great, you know, hanging around you guys and being around your, your family and being around your friends and being integrated without having to feel, you know, anything on the, being outcast or anything like that. So with you being like, you know, the co-founder of Trap Art, what makes you guys, you know, tick like what gets you guys going in the morning and makes you want to you know make this thing pop even more honestly I just feel like all of the the positive affirmations like you just gave like I just feel like when when people like just tell us like oh like you know you've been so welcoming or you've helped me start this or you've helped me do this like it's just a good feeling to know that like you know even when I'm not intentionally trying to do that I feel like when I'm just doing whatever work it is I'm doing I never know like how far or how much of an impact it's actually making um so I feel like just continuing to to do my little mundane task I do every day whether it's you know looking over people that are applying to be in a show and sending them like an acceptance letter if people are like oh my god you made my day and it's like you know it's it's a great feeling I don't know it just it keeps me rolling and I think also just like seeing the finished product of an event or a photo mm. shoot or a zoom meeting or anything even the small things um i just i really love to to see people um inspired so i think that inspires me in turn absolutely and i like to kind of take a step back because i know we are talking about trap art and we just assume that everybody actually knows right. about it but we kind of want to take a step back like you know 
when you guys were, you know, younger or you guys were in college together, you and your husband or boyfriend at the time, like what got you guys into doing the party scene? What made you guys wanted to get into that scene? Because it's not like a normal scene that, you know, college students kind of take that step and get into. Normally we're trying to get those little quick jobs to kind of, you know, get through the day, try to get a couple of dollars in our pockets to kind of make sure we got some food on the table. But what kind of got you guys into the the party, you know, at the um, space put like yeah, that? Yeah, it's actually, it's actually kind of a funny story. So, um, so we were out of college by the time we started doing the events together. Um, Jesse did events in college, um, but I graduated two years before him. So um, I actually moved to L.A. with him when we first got together. He had moved down to L.A. Wow. Um, and I worked at Nordstrom um, in the hosiery department. Um, and it was, <laughs> you know, it was all right. <laughs> you know, and, and he was interning um, at two different places. And we were broke. Like we lived in LA. We lived in like this little tiny studio that like his, um, his, some of his family from El Salvador were managing, um, an apartment building in the Los Feliz area in LA. And like, they like got us into the apartment, but it was legit, like a closet. Like it was so small. Um, (laughs) and it was just us. So we were fine. Like we weren't tripping. It was just like, you know, we were just there, but we, we really wanted to, um, elevate. I don't know. We just like, and so the first step was to move back to Oakland because we felt like we were just missing out on like, we're both very family oriented and, um, all of both of our families are here in Oakland. And so, um, we were like missing out on his little brother's basketball games. I'm missing out on like family gatherings. And so first we decided to move back home. Um, and I transferred to the Nordstrom in San Francisco and my boss was like, the worst like she was literally the worst person to work for in the world um she was super rude and super catty and it was just really terrible and so I remember working there for about like three weeks or so when we moved back to to the bay and um I was just like I cannot I I don't want to work there anymore like I just literally don't want to work there um and Jesse actually never really worked anywhere he was a college football player um, so he already was just like, not trying to work for nobody. Like he just did not have the work for people <laughs> swag. Like he was just like, no, I'm not about to go get a job nowhere. Um, and I was over it. So we decided like, oh, well, we still know people, um, that go to Cal and go to surrounding schools. Um, he knew some of the football players still, and I just knew some people that were around and he had thrown some parties. They weren't like super successful when he was throwing them by himself. Um, yeah. <laughs> It never is when yeah. you start. You never, it, it's always from the bottom. You got to start yeah, from somewhere. Yeah, so we got together and we just decided, like, you know, let's utilize. This was when Facebook was really big. There wasn't really Instagram quite yet. Um, and so we're like, let's just utilize Facebook. Like, we can we can locate all these different students by whatever school they go to. Um, and let's, like, let's just, let's just, like, invite hella people to a party. Like, really put the work in. Let's go to these college mm-hmm. campuses, like, print out tickets and, like, give them tickets and, like, we did our first event um, at this club called Miss in San Francisco. It's gone now, but um, it was smacking. It was like packed. And so, and we had like taken like a little, like, I feel like it was like a little like payday loan out to like pay for the club expenses. Oh um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we yep. made it back and it was really successful. And we were like, wow, like we know how to do this. Like, and it was, it was, it was a lot of work, but we knew how to do it. And I don't know, ever since then, we just kind of started to, um, so we did the college markets and that was cool. We even went down to high school because we were trying to find markets where we were like, they don't have any other options. Like they need to go to like a little club, you know, like a little kid club. Yeah. So we did those in uh, Santa Cruz and San Rafael. Um, and we, we did them and they were all pretty good. We had their ups and downs with it. But at the end of the day, we decided like, well, adults are going to be the most stable. Um, high school kids parties for high school kids are great because they have nowhere to go but when like report cards come out or things like that it's gonna affect attendance um and also you just have the liability of dealing with people's parents and you know all that stuff you don't like know it yep um Mm -hmm. and then college students were a great market but it was really hard to find venues that wanted to do 18 and up events um because there's a lot lot of liability Mm. on the venue and they don't make as much money from alcohol sales so we were like, all right, we're going to go for adults. Like there's so many events for adults. It's oversaturated, but let's just do it. Um, and so we started working with this venue called Supper Club in San Francisco. Um, 
And it was a really interesting story because when we first went to look at venues, like, Jesse would always tell me to just go inside because they're like, oh, like, I'm like a six foot black dude. Like, they're going to be like, oh, no, you know, San Francisco is all white. So yeah. I used to go in and do my, you know, put my little Cal Berkeley swag on and go in there. And um, <laughs> I remember meeting with the guy at Supper Club and he's a good person. Like, I'm not even trying to talk bad about him, but it was just ignorance, you know, and he's just like, oh, yeah, well, just make sure your events don't bring the thug element in here. Um but I'm like, oh, why? You already know what that means. <laughs> like me? So, <laughs> so actually, for about the first year or so, we were doing events for people that were not in our network at all. Like I'm talking like mm-hmm. EDM, house parties, like Russian people, like just using Facebook, finding people and getting yep. them together to come to a party. And so we just were like, oh, wow, we're actually really good at this. It's a lot of work, but we're good at creating an event, creating graphics and getting people somewhere. Um, So long story short, that happened for a while. Um, And then we started doing events at Mena Gallery, um, which is an art gallery. Mm -hmm. Um, But they weren't even art events. So we were just like, oh, this is a dope space to do parties. Um, And they were a little more lenient and allowed us to do like hip hop and other things like that. Um, And then trap art kind of just evolved. It wasn't very intentional at first, honestly. It was just more so like... um, Let's, you know, let's bring in some art. We watched a documentary about Basquiat on um, Netflix, and we were really inspired by, mm-hmm. like, the whole New York art scene um, that was taking mm-hmm. place back then. And so, and then we had a few people that were um, artists that were attending our events that were like, oh, like, can I come set up some art at your party? And we were like, yeah, that might be kind of cool. Um, and then it just kind of organically took form, um, and that's pretty much how it started. <laughs> And that's 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 what you want, man. You want something to organically like, kind of like come together. Sometimes you, that doesn't mean you're trying to force mm-hmm. it to happen. And when things organically happen, that means it's like it's it comes together with love and, and good intentions and good energy, and that kind of spawn off into something that's magical. Like, what do you feel the impact of Trap Art has made on the Oakland community, and how do you feel like they embrace you guys now that you guys have created something that's never been done before here in the Bay Area? Yeah, I mean, I feel like. I mean, you just, you know, you can never please anybody. There's always somebody got something to say. But, oh, yeah. But absolutely. no, but I do feel in general, I feel lots of love and lots of lots of appreciation. And I feel like um, a lot of people have come up to me and just say, like, you inspired me, you know, to start my art career. Like I had never shown art before trap art. And now I'm like selling canvases and working mm-hmm. with this and doing this. And another thing that I think has been um, really impactful is just beyond the events and beyond even trap art, I think, is the collaborations that have occurred. Um, all of the people that have met each other and done business as a result of meeting at Trap Art. Um, so I feel like that's been powerful. Um, I've seen a lot of, a lot of, you know, whether it's designers who were kind of starting with like, you know, minimal designs who have like really created a full on fashion line, uh, whether it's models who like were coming to their first casting and super nervous to like, you know, doing shows and doing shoots and doing stuff with other companies as well. So I feel like, you know, it's been it's been really inspiring for people and, and help people elevate. Absolutely. So, man, I, I totally I totally understand it. And I get that, man, because what you guys have created is something that is it hasn't been done before and it creates an energy in the city. So it's so infectious. So when you do have one of these events, it's like the lines around the corner. You know, so many people are talking about it. The energy is always upbeat. It's, it's live in there. And you guys are always doing something different that hasn't been done before. You know, normally you go to a party. It's normally you just turn off the lights. They get some alcohol. You kind of throw on some trap music and people just kind of have fun and they kind of do their thing. But when you come to a trap art event, you know, it's totally different. It's hard to explain to someone what it is without actually having to attend it yourself. So you say, oh, so have you ever been to a trap party? Like, no. And you try to explain to them, they're like, uh, I don't get it. And then when you actually go to an event, it's like, oh, now I get it. And that's how it was for me. Like, uh, when I first moved to the Bay back in the early, well, it was like 2012, 2013 or something like that. And I was actually like, talking to people like, hey, where's the, where's the go? What you do? You know, when you first come to the city, you don't right. know anything. You don't know anybody. So you're just asking around, like, what do you do? What's to do? And it's like, oh, you you ever heard of Trap Art? And I was like, no. And I think you guys were kind of like just kind of yeah. starting to bubble. You, you guys were still downtown, I think, at Monroe. And you guys were starting to bubble. So I went and checked out the event. I was like, okay, this is this is where I need to be because I'm an art student too. You know, I graduated with a graphic design, graphic design degree. So um, just being able to infuse that, that art and the, and the music side, that would made it just like, 
that blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is, yeah, I got to be a part of this. And so I attended one event, then I attended another one. I was like, look, I'm not paying for this again. I got to figure out how to be a part of this. <laughs> I got to figure out, I got to figure out a way, you know, because before I moved here, I was in Atlanta and I was running around Atlanta and I was doing photography in Atlanta, you know, going to different clubs. And I was like, I can bring that out here. And I was like, I don't know who run this, but I need to figure out who run it. You know what I mean? So I just kind of like start asking around. It was like, oh, that guy right there, talk to him. And I hit Jesse and I was like, hey man, you know, I want to come through and do, do some photography. He was like, man, come on, come next, come blah, blah, blah. I think it was like the next week or next couple of weeks or whatever. And I showed up. And it's just been love ever since, you know what I mean? We was down in Monroe and it was just like a, such a, just like the energy was so good that I was like, yeah, this is where I need to be. And when you guys are creating those events, tell the people some of the behind the scenes of like creating an event because they just kind of see the end product and they never really don't know how much it takes to get that, you know, to where, you know, it's such a, a fabulous event that people don't quite understand how much work goes into creating that, that moment. Yes, definitely. Well, first, I just want to say it was such a pleasure to meet you and see your first set of photos. It was just such like a <laughs> – I remember looking through your photos and being like, these are so good. Like, we need to hire him. Like, for real, for real. Like, and we're <laughs> – like, one of, the, one of the things that we've always been about was, like, you know, keeping our expenses low. That's been our thing from the jump. Just, like, that's been, like – because I feel like a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of the mistakes a lot of people make – when doing events is being like, well, I need this and I need that. And I got to pay for this and I got to hire this person. And, and we just have never been like that. We've kind of been like, we're going to make this, we're going to do the stuff ourselves. Um, <laughs> if I got to walk around and take pictures, but, but no, but like when we saw your, your photos and just your, your approach, we just were like, no, nah, he's, he's dope. Like we like him like dope vision. You know, we were like, we go, we got to have him. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I, and like I said, people don't understand how important it is to sometimes work for free because they don't see the opportunity unless it's a bag attached to it. And I was like, look, man, I do this for free because I enjoy coming here. I enjoy doing this. And if something come of it, it does. If it doesn't, oh, well, I just want to be a part of this somehow. And you guys was like, hey, look, man, we really we really like what you're doing, man. Come back next week. We want you to do this week after this. And then I was like, every other week, it was just like, keep coming. And it was just like, okay, I'm a part, I'm, I'm being a part of this. You know, we're growing together. And I felt that. And you guys made me feel you know, great about that because when you're when you're when you're an artist, you know, you just want to be welcomed. You know what I mean? Because you don't know how your art feels until you actually put it out there to people. Right, right. No, for sure. I feel like that that Erica Baidu quote: "I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my." You know, that's like that's real. You know, and so I feel like when people do put themselves out there, a lot of times there is a lot of like nerve wrackiness about it, and I feel like nah, you just you had a great approach. So I feel like it was it was meant to be. Um. So thank you for that. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, back to your question about, um, you know, what goes into behind the scenes. Well, first of all, you know, you have to figure out how many artists can I can I book in this space? You know, that's that's the first thing. And then, you know, there are a lot of artists. There's a demand for artists to showcase. You know, there's there's a demand for artists. Like you said, there wasn't really anything like trap art when trap art began. Um, so it was like a place for people who were just getting started or a place where people didn't have an outlet to showcase their work. So the first thing is just like sorting through all the artists and trying to figure out how many can we even fit in here, right? So getting that logistic together. Um, and then once you get the artists, you know, creating all of the communication with them, with like, you know, what they need to bring for setup, what they can't bring for setup, what they should use, what they shouldn't use, and answering all of those questions. So it's really just a lot of communication. Like, and that's just the artist part. So then on top of that, you know, you want the party to be, you still want there to be a party. You want there to be customers for the artist. Um, so then you have to deal with like, you know, recruiting people to promote the event and, you know, getting a team of people that are essentially hosting the event, that are posting it on Instagram, that are inviting their friends. And so not only are you dealing with like, you know, anywhere from 25 plus artists, now you're dealing with about like a hundred different people that we've given promo codes to. And, you know, just having that communication and making sure they understand how everything works and being available to talk and answer questions and meet up with people and do phone calls and um, and then dealing with the actual venue, you know, making sure whatever stipulations and rules they have. So it's like once you arrive there for setup, mm -hmm. it's like you have to deal with the venue, the artists, the people that are working for you, the staff we have to hire. Luckily, we have really great staff here in the Bay. Um it's a little trickier when we go out of town, but in the Bay, I love our staff. Um, so that's a little bit less stressful. Like my cousin Sabrina is absolutely excellent at running a fashion show. Like she's got the skills and the patience to like 
deal with 10 designers who are, have massive anxiety, who are trying to get their models together, sometimes are still sewing clothes 20 minutes before the show. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, making sure that the DJ is Absolutely. on time and, and making sure that I've communicated with the photographer what's all going on during the night. You know, there's literally so many things. <laughs> but I love it. So it's, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's a, it creates an experience. I think that's what's one of the things that Trap Art does that a lot of the um, other parties don't. It creates an experience. It's like it's not like you like I say, you just go to the club and you just drinks and turn on the trap music and turn the lights down. You guys just kind of create your own fun in, in that moment. You're actually creating something that's going on. You know, you have a fashion show, you have the art, or you have an, a, a somebody speaking, or you have somebody doing some some type of spoken word, or somebody's rapping, or just a lot of different things. You just never know what you're going to see there, and that comes from you guys' creativity. And one of the things you talked about is like your, your cousin, Sabrina, like talk about like teamwork, what it takes to like run something like that. It takes something like not just yourselves, but you have to actually trust people. How do you guys kind of build and work into that aspect of like trusting people? Yeah. And that was honestly like really tough for really long. And so for a long time, it was just Jesse and I trying to do everything. <laughs> like I was literally working the door. He was literally doing like it was just crazy. Like it was it was tough. And like, I mean, even still, I feel like when it, when you're passionate about your, your work, your, your creation, you're still going to be more passionate than anyone else, regardless. Like that's, and that's something that you have to come to terms with. Um, so it's really just finding the, finding the team that at least is, is going to have a good percentage of that passion, you know, for it. Um, and that is going to be consistent and going to, you know, basically, see see the vision seeing the vision is the main thing um if we're all on the same page and we all have the same vision then then things are going to work so i mean we have kept it very um we've still kept it small i think um you know uh jesse's cousin amechi was like our first team member really like you know when he was doing a lot of um a lot of the the visuals a lot of the videos and interviews with artists and and really um offering artists an outside experience outside of just the events he did a lot of projects I know you've done mm -hmm. projects with him just a lot of projects yep. where I think that really helped trap art turn into not just an event you know where it was like oh we're doing you know video shoots and making small films and you know doing all these different things um so I feel like Brennan was probably like the first team member um and then my friend Maria does an excellent job of managing the door. So I don't have to do it anymore. Um, but, you know, it's like, you know, you just want to have somebody it's that gross. you trust that, you know, that's going to sit there and mm -hmm. handle tickets and credit cards and all those things. Um, and Maria has been excellent. Like, literally, every time we have an event, she's there. She's consistent. She's on time. She knows how to deal with all of the personalities at the door. Um, yep. <laughs> she's just really great with that. And then most recently, you know, we started the um, the internship project uh, process, which was before the pandemic, so like 2019, and that was a great experience. We we actually opened up our home and had like interns coming in um, for different hours, working on different projects, and you know, we met a lot of really amazing people. And through that, we ended up hiring two people um, to do different projects. We have Sonia, who is now on our Instagram Live and does a lot of hosting for us. And she's kind of like the face of Trap Arts Instagram. And it's a, a beautiful, wonderful face. So, you know, I love having her. Um, and she's just been excellent. Her energy is always very positive. And, and Jana is a little bit more behind the scenes, but she does a lot of helpful things. Um, and like I mentioned, Sabrina um, does great, like, event day stuff. Um, and then you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, amazing photography. It's been consistent. Um, so I think, you know, it was really just a lot of trial and error, but I think we also just got lucky. Like, you know, we honestly just got lucky and got some really <laughs> great people that have been consistent for like years now. So I couldn't complain more, you know, I couldn't complain at all about the, about the team. That's fantastic. Man, I know we have so much I want to, I just like have so much I want to talk about. So I just have to take my time and make sure we kind of get through these things. <laughs> like, I know you talked about, you talked about like Sabrina being there for like all the fashion designers. Like, like what do you guys, uh, what, what have you learned from creating a, a experience like that for the, for the people that come to Trap Art? Like this fashion show, like tell us more about this fashion show, how it come about. Like, would you continue? How do you see it growing? What do you see it in like in the next three to five years? How do you see it being like something that's 
that's so massive in the Bay that it needs its own day. Not necessarily just the trap art events, but just the fashion mm-hmm. show itself. No, I, I love I love the fashion shows when they're done correctly. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I love the fashion shows. Um, I love working with the designers and the models. Um, I love, I always like love that part when it's like, okay, we did all this. Now the show's time, show time. And then when it's actually happening, it's, it's just a beautiful experience. Um, I mean, I, I think that the fashion shows and the whole fashion element has also, in addition to what I was saying with Amechi doing the um, the videos, I think that's another part that's really created a community um, with the fashion designers and the models um, just kind of like, you know, coming to rehearsals and, you know, really becoming um, a community. So, you know, in the future, I do definitely want to work on more um, fashion-centric events um, where it's just like, you know, yeah, just centered around fashion. I've always loved fashion, um, apparently. And I kind of remember this, but apparently when I was like a little kid, I would, my grandma had like this huge bin of just like scarves, like all different scarves. I guess she collected scarves, like just all kind of scarves. And like, I would put on my own fashion shows for her. So even though I'm not currently wow. a designer, um, I, I love just fashion and seeing all the creativity. And it's just amazing. Like the talent that we've seen through some of these designers um, that have come through Trap Art. Um, so going forward, I mean, we just are getting started again with the the fashion shoots that we used to do. You, you've done some of those, the fashion shoots that we used mm-hmm. to do um, before the pandemic. And so we're just getting back to those. We just did one a couple weeks ago that we published in the magazine. Um, and so we're working on doing some more of those fashion shoots, um, creating more events that are fashion centric. And now that we have the membership program, um, it's a lot you know, easier to be in contact with, with the people that are, you know, the designers, the models, the photographers, we're kind of all in one place now, um, where it's easy to curate these different experiences. Yeah. Tell us, tell us more about the membership. Like, tell us more about the membership. I know there's something that you guys have created since the pandemic, because, you know, you guys were a lot of, a lot of it was done in-house. Uh, you had a lot of, you know, things at the trap bar, but then when the pandemic hit, of course, you can't get a lot of people together. So you have to make a transition with the business. Yeah. Tell us, tell me a little bit more about how the transition, how the business transitioned during the pandemic. I know you have the membership now, you have other things. So kind of talk about yeah, that a little definitely. bit. So when the pandemic first hit, like, like you said, we were like, a hundred percent like events like that was pretty much what we did like it was just all events we had our little projects here and there but it was mostly like you know we're focusing on expanding to all these different cities planning all these events and so it just you know abruptly as everyone's aware just abruptly stopped right so we're like oh my god like what do we do <laughs> you know so um <laughs> the first thing that i thought to do was to find a platform to host our magazine that i could release digitally mm-hmm. instead of like printing them that we had been doing the printed magazines we did five of them um and honestly those were more of like a branding type thing they weren't really like a business thing it mm-hmm. was more so like this is dope it wasn't really like selling or anything it was just like this is dope um and I love that we did it I wouldn't change it I would still do it um it was it was great you know putting them together but we had to think kind of like okay how can we still give artists exposure how can we sort of try to recoup a little bit of money you know how can we make everybody happy in this process and so we decided instead of like offering you know photo shoots because we couldn't meet in person or anything like that um and it also opened it up because before most of the features were local because we were planning all the shoots um so we decided okay well why don't we like create you know an online interview and have people submit their own photos um and that way we can feature them and it send it out to all of our network and you know we've we've collected about you know 50,000 emails here and there you know from different things wow. so you know there is value in you know submitting to the magazine and being promoted to all these different people so we were like, well, why don't we create this thing and then we'll basically accept people for each month and put them in the magazine. Um, and so it worked. People were like really excited and we made the publication fee very small, like nothing crazy. Um, we are, we're aware that our network is not people like, you know, money bags. You know, we just wanted to have something affordable <laughs> that we could still like, you know, be yep. worth our time and energy and like give us something during the pandemic. And so that was really successful. I just released volume 21. Um, so they've been coming out monthly, wow. um, and we're full through March right now of next year. So people are still applying and still doing it. Um, so the magazine was the first thing. And then we started to offer the IG live interviews for a small fee, um, where Sonia would hop on and like, you know, spend like an hour with someone on Instagram live and like 
let them have their shine for that moment. Um, and so that was cool. Um, and we, and we still do that, but we transfer transitioned it to members only at this point. So around May, we'd still been doing the, it had been basically like over a year of doing the magazine and the Instagram live interviews. That's pretty much all we were doing. Um, and then we were like, Oh, well, what about like a membership? We kept seeing all these different subscriptions and we we're like, we, what could we offer to people? Um, like what are basically, what do people in our network need? Like what, what type of, you know, commodity can we offer? And we're like, well, we already know people want to have, um, you know, a space to feel like people are like-minded, you know, coming to a space where, you know, they can come into a Zoom meeting and, and see other artists sharing their work and talk about their process or other artists talk about their frustrations with marketing. And then maybe I can step in and help with, you know, my experience. And so, we just started that in May, um, just started basically recruiting people to be like, hey, do you want to be a member? People that we already kind of had known in different cities. Um, and so we're up to about 150 members now, um, which is nice. pretty cool. Um, we we meet almost weekly on Zoom um, and we talk about different topics from mental health check-ins to branding and marketing to me advising people on like how to properly have your business intact um to just like chill share moments it's all it's very different you know it's all different kind of stuff that we talk about and then within the membership members are also given first dibs on event signups so now that we're back to doing events um there's a long line of artists that are ready to showcase and so as a member you get basically like the first week before everybody else before we announce it to the public we announce it to our members that we have an event somewhere um, members get to hop on IG Live with Sonia for free now. There's no fee ad- added to that. Um, nice. We also give them free magazine ads. An ad was something that we did not previously have in the magazine. So now we have like one page clickable ads that are all of our members who can share whatever they have going on. Um, and so that's something that they've been taking advantage of. Um, and then we're just going to continue. You know, we did our first member shoot. Uh, at the event we had a couple weeks ago where it was a member that was a photographer and a member that was a designer who came together and created some really beautiful shoots um so yeah the membership is is awesome um I really enjoy meeting all the members and I also offer like small group meetings with me so if they want to tap in or need advice on anything or um want to run like today I met with an artist who was like I just made my website can you look at it and tell me if you have any you know anything you want to tell me I need to fix or change and so I really love you know connecting with everyone um and being able to create that community um for the membership and so the membership's going great it's just sky's the limit with it we're just going to keep going with it um and just try to keep thinking of new things to offer our members Awesome. I know there are two things in there that I want to kind of like want you to expound on. Um, one is about, you know, you talk about the business aspect. I know you kind of talk about this in the membership, but I kind of want you to give some of those secrets away. Maybe a couple of those tips and tricks to kind of help somebody to kind of get in a position where they they haven't necessarily started their business yet, but they're thinking about starting it. So what kind of things do you think they need to, you know, steps they need to take to make sure that they're legit? Because sometimes we are, we're, we're at home, we're working, we're making, creating art because artists, sometimes artists don't know how to be a business right. person. They just know how to create the arts. They don't know how to either how to sell it or create the business and because you have to be legal. So give us some of those tips and tricks or how does somebody can get, make sure that they're legitimate when it times to kind of start collecting money, start advertising themselves. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just as simple as just having your EIN, you know, having your own filing with the IRS. You know, these are some of the things that like some of the artists had like no idea about, you know. And I didn't have any idea about either, you know, when I was younger either. So, you know, just kind of the things that I've taught myself over the years, but just showing them like, okay, like you need to file an EIN. You need to figure out how you want to classify your business. Do you want an LLC? Are you a sole proprietor? Um, Kind of just those simple things, teaching them the difference between those things. Um, From there, do you do you have any sort of basic accounting going on? Do you know how to use a spreadsheet? Um, You know, are you know how to make a profit and loss statement? Um, do you know how to, you know, are you filing taxes? Because if you're not doing those things, when all these artists grants and things come up, which a lot did come up during the pandemic, those were all of the paperwork and things you needed to have in order in order to be eligible for those things. Um, so just, those are just some examples of, um, of some of the things I'll do like a workshop with the members when I'll, you know, we'll be on zoom and I'll have, you know, documents and I'll share my screen with people and kind of just walk them through 
the processes of different types of avenues of doing business. Um, the other cool thing about the membership is that we have members that also have great skills beyond what I have because I don't know everything, right? So we have people that yep. that um, also will lead workshops. So we just had one of our members, um, Vanita. She's awesome. She she teaches financial literacy to um, people of color specifically. That's like her mission, and she's also an artist. Um, and so she led a workshop just on basic accounting, just so people could kind of learn how to use a, learn how to use a spreadsheet and learn how to budget, you know, learn how to, you know, just literally just simple things that, um, I feel like we may take for granted if we know how to do that, like, you know, other people have never been exposed to these things because like you said, they're artists, they're in their creative lane. They're not worried about the other stuff, you know? So yep. we want to create, you know, a space where they can kind of be well-rounded in all aspects. Absolutely. And that's the theme. And like I said, man, a lot of artists, they just, they like to create. They don't know anything about the business side there. And then they are necessarily their, their art. Sometimes I've seen it where artists kind of create something and their art get out there. And that's a good thing. And there's also a bad thing because it's not right. copyrighted or anything like that. And you, it ends up selling somebody selling it at Walmart or somebody copyrighted and they're selling it on your behalf. Well, not on your behalf. They're selling it, making money yeah. off your art and you don't, you own it. You think you own it, but you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily own it right. legally. Because once it's out there and you haven't put your stamp on or anything like that, then you have to try to go and try and get money back. It's just a long, hard road. But that's why I want you to kind of talk about that up front to kind of get artists in the mindset that say, hey, you are a business yourself. Create your stuff like you're supposed to in the beginning and you can kind of save yourself the headache on the back end. And so one of the other things I heard you talk about when you said um, about the magazine, a lot of people, they are really into you know, the digital form. I know we were, you said you were doing the magazine first on the first couple of copies. I really appreciate you guys for letting me be on the first on the first cop, first couple of copies, matter of fact, and being on the cover, shooting the cover art and things like that. That was really dope. I appreciate that. And what I want to talk about is like when you're creating that, let people know that you're doing it yourself. You don't have anybody doing that for you. You're creating, you're sitting down, you're coming up ideas. You have kids who hanging off one arm and one on your leg and you're trying to create that. Uh, tell us about that process for you because you're saying you're doing it monthly. So I, I imagine you have to really be kind of honed in and trying to make sure that because um, the pages get up to 100 something odd pages. So you have a lot of different articles and things like that. And also, what is one of the things that one of the stories that really resonate with you and kind of, you know, kind of feel like you're kind of attached to while creating all this, um, these different magazines, a hundred, you over, you know, 21 issues? Yeah. Well, honestly, the the fact that it's digital or, you know, online is a lot less stressful because I can make an edit if I make a mistake, right? So ah, that's amazing yeah. because that used to be the worst, like going over and like editing and editing and editing the ones that are going to go print. Cause like once it's printed, it's done, you know, there's no, it's, it's done. there's no change in that. So that used to be a lot more stressful. Um, Whereas now, like, you know, I can go in and fix it, you know, so that's something that's that that's great. I mean, obviously, I try not to make mistakes, but it's inevitable, right? So, um, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, the, the process of just, like, getting it done, I still need to work on, I, I feel like I tell myself, like, okay, it's the beginning of the month, like, you should be knocking out more of these before it gets to crunch time. And there just are so many other things to do. And it's kind of like, it does have a, a due date, but it kind of feels like the due date is so far when you're like around this time in the month. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I got to. <laughs> yeah. I got time. And I got it always time. gets really stressful at the end, but you know, I do it. Um, but I feel like it's just, it's just the process has gotten easier um, because it's like, I do it so much now. Um, and then I've kind mm -hmm. of changed it's muscle memory. Yeah. I've changed the, the design of it. I keep changing the design of the design of it. Um, but changing the design of it usually makes it easier for me in a certain way. Like when I'm kind of like, I'll create mm -hmm. like a template and then I'll kind of like, I still have to switch it out obviously for each person because their photos are different and they're submitting photos. So I kind of have to work with what I'm, what's submitted to me, mm, which is a little bit you, trickier. Yep. And then I do edit the magazine for like grammar and syntax and things like that. So most of it is written in the artist's words um, because it's like an interview. But I do have to obviously okay. read everything and edit things to make sure that they flow and make sense and that there's not any like major grammatical flaw, uh, flaws in it. So it's, you know, it's a lot. But <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of used to it now. I'm on 21. So it's just kind of part of the part of the plan I did actually just um 
for this month coming up, I, I'm kind of doing something different where I'm creating some of the cover pages actually on my phone first. Um, because there's oh, a lot of okay. a lot of really great apps that you can kind of work from on your phone. Um, and then mm-hmm. I'm transferring it where that part was kind of the hardest part. And if I can do it on my phone, I can be kind of everywhere. You know, I don't have to be sitting in front yep, of my laptop. You don't have to be stationary with the laptop. So I'm still going to yep. have to sit with my laptop to really put it all together, but I'm, but I'm able to do Mm -hmm. some of the things from my phone. So we're going to see how that works this month, but, um, I have faith that it'll, it'll be great. (laughs) It's great. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's been beautiful since day one. It's like, not like your normal magazine. We just kind of have just a cover shot of somebody on there. It's always creatively done each month. One month could be an artist. One month could be a person. Next month can be a piece of something else. It's just so um, I, I look forward to it because it's always something different. You never know what's on the corner on, on the cover. I even got shocked one time when I was on the cover. I didn't even submit it. And somebody that I took a photo of that we randomly just we took a it was just like we were doing a pandemic and um no, yeah, it was during the pandemic and we had the George Floyd issue had a situation mm-hmm. had happened, you know, rest in peace to George Floyd. And she wanted she called me up and was like, Hey, I want to do something. I was like, Cool, let's go out and make it happen. We just went around Oakland, we just kind of made it happen. And then, you know. I shot that a long time ago and then all of a sudden it just showed up on the cover and I was like, wow, you know what I mean? So I was shocked. So it was just like a beautiful thing. And so for you to be able to create that each and every month, that's something that's amazing for us as a reader to get because I look forward to it. So would you ever you know, let go the reins of it and let somebody else do it? Or do you feel like it's your baby and you have to continue to do it from now yeah, on? Yeah, I, I probably have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it's your baby. Yeah, like you, I, I have, Sonia has helped me before. I won't lie. Sonia has helped me with input before and she did a great job with that. Um, it's just, it's like getting it all together though. And like cohesively Mm -hmm. ready to go is the part where I feel like I just have to do it. Um, but I have had some moments where, um, actually around the time that uh, Mars was born. I was like, I have a newborn and I'm, you know, this is intense. I just like, I, I taught her how to help me and she did help me. Um, and then once I got kind of back in the groove of things, then I, I, I resumed doing it myself. Awesome. You're the chief editor of the magazine from Trap Art. And so we'll just take a step back and kind of get back to the party uh, part of it, the event part of it. And you guys were, you know, you were creating something. At what point did you realize that, hey, we can expand this. We can get outside of the Bay Area. We can move to another city. We can make this happen. Like what gave you the confidence and what made you feel like, hey, we are ready at this point? Because a lot of times you have a party, this kind of at the club, it just kind of happens and it just goes away. You never hear it again. The club shuts down and just kind of move on to the next promoter. Like, but you guys were at the foresight to think, okay, we can get outside of the Bay Area. So tell us, tell us a little bit about that. In that yeah, process. I mean, I think our philosophy was just that like, there's artists everywhere, like literally, like there are young, like POC artists everywhere. And that's, you know, that's essentially who we, I feel like the majority of our artists are like black and Latino. Um, and then we do, mm-hmm. we obviously we're open to everyone. Like we're, everyone is welcome. Um, but that's just the majority of people that showcase with us. Um, and I think we just started thinking about all the other cities that where the population, I mean, you know, the population is we're in America. So it's like, there's, there's black and Latino people everywhere, but we were kind of like, where, you know, where are some other cities where like, there's a, you know, a good population of these people. And I think utilizing Instagram is really helpful because you can simply type in like Atlanta artist hashtag, you know, and <laughs> here we are. Voila. You know, there's a bazillion of them. So I think that's what happened. We just started to be like, wow, this is going really well here. And it's really just really the artists are, are kind of the, the main heart of it. You know, the artists are, you know, mm-hmm. the party and us planning everything, obviously putting it all together, but you have to have the artist. And so we were able to find artists, you know, if you just literally go on Instagram, you can find artists in any city in the United States. Um, some are going to be easier than others, going to be more plentiful than others. Um, but our first, um, you know, the first, we, we knew that LA was obviously a market because the Bay and LA are like, you know, they're yeah, it's just, yeah they're you know, it's just the same thing. Everybody's back and forth. So that was easy. We're like, LA is going to be easy. Um, our next one was Atlanta. We're like, Atlanta is going to be easy, you know? And I mean, there's tons of art, there's tons of young black artists in Atlanta. So 
we were able to do that. And um, our first event in Atlanta was was good. Um, there was ridiculous weather that night. Um, <laughs> and it was July. So we were like, not used to that being born and raised in Oakland. Like our weather is very normal here. Like we just have seasons and like, it's pretty temporal, you know, it's pretty temperate. It's not too crazy. Um, no thunderstorms in the summer type of stuff. So we were like, what on earth is going on? But you know, it was a great experience and it's still, you know, it still was successful. And so I think after doing Atlanta and LA, we were like, well, yeah, like honestly, anywhere is fine. Then we could do an event anywhere. Um, and we did an events in a lot of places. <laughs> so it's- Yeah, and I can I can agree. Yeah, I can agree. You guys been to, you know, Detroit, New York, you know, Canada, Africa, everywhere. Like you are pretty much anywhere that there's a, a demographic of people that really fits your your style, you can always reach out to them and you can make something happen. And I think that's the great thing about this um this trap art event. You can it can be duplicated. Now you found a system that you can replicate somewhere else. It's not necessarily just, okay, we can get the party together and let's try to get some people from our town to kind of come out and kind of come spend money with us and enjoy themselves at the same time. But no, you have a system in place now. And that's the thing I, I, I like about you guys. You guys have created a system that can be duplicated. And that's the biggest thing. That's, I think that's one of the hardest things to do in that in this industry, create, creating a system. A lot of people are, you know, just creating, just getting parties. They, they promote it. And then the party happens and then it's over with. And then it's on to the next party. Let me get the next rapper right. in here. Let's try to see if we can do this again. But you guys have a system that it doesn't necessarily rely on an artist to come through. It just, the uh, you, you guys rely on the actual painter or somebody body paint like you never seen body paint inside of an art you know inside of a party before and i think that's what the the big mesh together what creates a, a epic moment because you have all these different things going on at one time and you also have the trap mm-hmm. music going on at the same time too and that get, that kind of gets you in the mode and you really have an experience that you've never experienced before so when you guys are in these other cities like what are your what are your thoughts on like, do I want to make this a major hub or is just like, OK, we come into the city here and then we'll come back at some point. Like, how do you guys decide on those type of things? I think it's just like like you said, it's kind of like the response of the of the attendees. I don't know. It's like if people are I feel like we, we've kind of like categorized some of the cities into two two different ways. So there's like the 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 more like vendor events where like people are just kind of coming and like checking it out and they're like oh this is cool but like not really like partying you know Mm -hmm. um and then there's the ones where it's like they're like the bay like they get it they get there and they look at everything and then it's like people are really dancing and having a great time like you're getting that real experience of like there's art here but this is also like really a function like this is a party um and i feel like that doesn't happen everywhere. It just doesn't happen everywhere. Like, um, in some places it's just more, it's just more dope. It's just like, Oh, this is dope. Like this is a dope experience. Other places you're like, this is crazy lit. Like this is like dope and just crazy. Like, you know, and so some of the places that have given us that like lit energy, like you mentioned Detroit, Detroit is amazing. Um, I honestly didn't know what to expect from Detroit. Like the first time around, you know, I honestly was kind of like apprehensive because like all the things you hear about Detroit. <laughs> and so, um, you know, but it was amazing, like getting there and the people were just really sweet and really beautiful. And like the artists were super dope and like they were like really turning up. Like it was like it felt like Oakland, you know, and and Detroit was in. I also feel like um, we've had those vibes in um, in um, L.A., of course. LA, Detroit, Mm -hmm. Oakland. Um, I feel like the other cities, it's kind of like touch and go. Like it'll be, it's, it's always Mm -hmm. dope. It's always dope. But like that real. But it's just a different vibe. It's a different vibe in those other cities. I can tell because, you know, in Dallas and Houston and other places, you can just kind of tell where it's not like the Bay. Like it's not, it doesn't have that feel, but you know what I'm saying? They enjoy themselves, but it's just a little bit different. Um, I did want to ask you, like, what if somebody just walked up to you guys and said, hey, I really believe in you guys. Here's 50000 to to $100,000. What would you use that money for to make this thing go to the next level? What would you do? Um, I feel like I would love to do, like, a really big, like, festival. Um, 
And I'll probably nice. do that anyway without somebody giving us that. But we're, 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 we're talking about it. But just a dope, like, something. I would do it here in the Bay, um, in Oakland. Um, I feel like just a festival where, like, you had, like, some headlining music artists. Because um, that, that, I feel like that really mm-hmm. brings it all together. Along with, yep. you know, food and and drinks, maybe like wine tasting and like just all kind of cultural things, body painting, tattoo artists, um, you know, all types of artists and vendors, like just all kind of different, like, like a food market, all kind of different things going on. Um, like a weekend festival type thing. That's probably the thing I would love to do the most. Um, I know that will be, it'll be insane because you guys, um, you did one that was in, in um, the big venue mm-hmm. in Richmond. Yeah, that was insane. It was crazy because, you know, I was talking to people who were all from all over the country that came in. It was like, hey, look, I knew this was going on. I, I wanted to be a part of it. And it was just different. You, like, you don't see that that happening here in the Bay. Like, you go to other places and they have those festivals, those those large parties and things like that. But the Bay quite hasn't yeah. got there yet. And they don't really, they're not really centered around artists because the Bay really doesn't need an artist to come in to make a venue right. pop or a party to pop right. or anything like that. Because the, when someone because the bay has a it's more of a i think it's more of a a family oriented city to me and that's how i kind of feel because in other cities you go they're big and you have to have an artist there to get right. people to come out but here you don't have to have an artist you can just say hey you know this is an event that's going on and people will show up and they'll vibe and they'll have a good time and if the artist there yeah that's an that's a, a extra incentive to come but we don't necessarily don't necessarily need an artist to kind of make an event to happen here so i i really i can really see you guys like being a part being something bringing something that large to the to the Bay Area and really making it so dope that people want to be talking about this for the ages and necessarily, you know, taking it to another city yeah. and just kind of growing this thing because um, the fashion show, I've seen it from, you know, the the baby stage, from incubation, the idea, from going from idea stage to, you know, to thinking about it and, and designing it and then putting the stage together, then seeing the models come on stage and just kind of see this whole thing unfold and then it growing from day one to where it is now. It's amazing. Sometimes it's, 13 sets of mod, 13 sets of designers sometimes it's three but it, it's it gives you the same vibe no matter if it's a large one or a small one do you ever feel overwhelmed when you're kind of doing all this juggling you got the magazine the fashion show the parties the family the husband we didn't even talk about the husband aspect of working with the husband we mm-hmm. definitely get to that but do you feel overwhelmed sometimes and when you do what do you kind of do to take a take a I step back definitely feel overwhelmed like a lot of the time um <laughs> but I feel like I just, you know, I will say that my husband, Jesse, is amazing and very supportive. And, you know, we're doing this together. Like you said, you know, we're working together and we can talk about that. But, like, I feel like, um, you know, we we do kind of center each other, you know. So, like, there's times. It's interesting, though. I feel like we we rarely feel overwhelmed at the same time, I think, which is a good thing. Mm. Um like, I'll feel very overwhelmed, and then, like, maybe that'll be a time when he's not feeling so overwhelmed, and I feel like we can kind of talk mm-hmm. each other down <laughs> off the ledge, um, but, you know, there's there's been times when we were both overwhelmed, but I feel like, you know, I just tell myself, like, whatever I'm overwhelmed about, it's gonna just happen, and it's gonna come and go, like, so if it's the magazine, I'm gonna get the magazine done, it's gonna happen, like, I, it's just, I'm not gonna not do it, it's gonna happen, it's gonna, it's gonna get done one way or another. <laughs> this event is going to happen. It's going to, it's going to come, it's going to go. And regardless yeah. of what the result is, it's going to be over, you know? So I feel like that's more of my attitude, just kind of like trying to stay present um, and just realizing that like, let me just work on one thing at a time. And um, that's all I can do. I can only work on one thing at a time. Um, I, I usually try to, like I said, kind of just block things off where I know if I really need to work on something, if I really need to finish the magazine, I'll be like, babe, I really need to finish the magazine. So like, I need you to like take the kids to the park or, you know, something where it's like, I need to do this. Like I, it's, it's down to the point where I'm like having like anxiety while I'm sleeping. I have to do this. Um, and he's amazing. He's very supportive in that way. And then like, even with him, like if he needs to do something, like if he needs to work on something then you know i'll i'll give him that ability or or if i can do it like if i if i have a moment where he's overwhelmed about something i'm like you want me to just do it and so like i feel like we do that a lot nice and so you know working with the husband how is that you know what i mean because 
sometimes I don't think my wife, we can put a desk together without, you know, fussing at each other. We love each other to death, but it's just something about working with each other and trying to be on the same page because, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to run things my way. She wants to run things her way. So how do you guys work together? How do you give that, that, that give and that, that go sometime to kind of like, you know, I let me lead and then I take a step back and things like that. How do you guys work through those type of things? I feel like we, we just are very compatible, like in general. Um, and I feel like that we're just lucky, honestly. And that, and that being like, we're just, we've always been very compatible when it comes to like kind of roles. Um, I think that there's obviously been times where we've bumped heads on things or we have different opinions about things. Um, you know, like sometimes when I'm creating like graphics or doing something and he might be like, are you sure like you want to like, and I, I will get defensive, you know, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge that I'm. Sometimes you're artists. You don't realize right. that you're artists. Yeah, you don't even realize that you are an artist. Right. So sometimes, sometimes I won't even. I'll just come out and be defensive, and then he's like, "No, I'm just, you know." And so I have to kind of like, and it's been over the years I've learned, like, okay, let me like, you know, understand that he's he's saying it from like a perspective where like it's his perspective, and he's entitled to that perspective. And so I feel like we both are kind of like have communicated how to talk to each other, you know, through through disagreements. Um, and we're in no way perfect, but I think that over the years, um, we have kind of learned each other's triggers. Um, so we try to avoid them. Um, and it, 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 it does work most of the time. <laughs> so. so what do you guys, what do you do for, you know, to get away from the business? Because it's, because it's so, it's so, you know, interlocked and intertwined with you guys. You know, you have the business, you're personal, you're married, you got the kids together, you're doing all the work from home. So what do you guys do to step away from the business? Like, how do you guys put it down? Like, all right, you know, today we got to do nothing but be about each other and be about the kids. Like, what do you guys do for yeah, fun? Yeah, we, well, we love going wine tasting. Like, that's like our thing. Um, So we'll plan our, like, Napa Valley days. Um. And those are great. We never, like, we don't work when we're there. Like, we're like, no, we don't even, like, we just go and have a good time. We enjoy the scenery. We drink wine. We have fun. Um, and then also with the kids, like, I am, like, really big on wanting to expose my kids to, like, different experiences and, like, different places and different events and just different things. And so we'll do, we do a lot of activities with the kids, whether we're going to like, you know, a farm for them to like, you know, feed goats, or we're going to go to the zoo, or we're going to go, you know, we went to this, um, like, war ship that's in Alameda, where like, we took the kids, like, we were able to go on the ship, and they have like, airplanes inside, like, we're always, I'm always finding things for us to take the kids to, um, and so we definitely try to unplug and do that often, um, because I feel like, a, I want to have those experiences, and I just, I'm kind of like a big kid, too. Like, I like doing, like, fun stuff, you know, like, just doing stuff like kids like to do. Absolutely. So, we Absolutely. do that kind of stuff all the time. I totally get it. You know, we, when I try to do the same thing, some days you just have to, I don't know, like, after a big fashion show, you know, I've been shooting all night. I shoot over, you know, 2,500 photos, and my yes. eyes are tired, <laughs> and the next day, I just cannot look at it. Like, I was like, the next day, I know sometimes, like, I can get these out faster, I can do it faster, yeah. but the next day, I just have to, like, decompress and just take a step back from it and be like, all right, I'm just going to unplug the day, spend time with the family. And then that day after that, I'll kind of get started with it. I'll let everybody go to sleep. And then I'll come in and I'll start on and I'll work, you know, do a little bit here and do a little bit there. Like you said, you got to take your time. You can't try to do it all at once and things like that. So, you know, it's been amazing to just, you know, talk to you and kind of get your perspective. You know, I've talked to Jesse already and kind of got his his out, his out his take on how things go from his side. And I wanted to talk to the, mm -hmm. the other side and kind of get your perspective because you guys do different things. Like he does all a lot of the social mm -hmm. media side of it. And then he says, oh, man, I'm not doing none of the back end stuff. I let, I let the wifey handle all that. Like you handle all the back end stuff, all the creative side of it. So it's just amazing to kind of see how you guys kind of you fit perfectly together, you know, because you're good at some of the things he's not so good at. Some of the things he's good at, you're not good at. And so you guys kind of, you know, play off each other. And that's great. And you kind of you can see that when you guys are out and about, you know, you can see the energy that you guys have. You can see the love and the family. And I and I, I really I really enjoy that because as being, you know, someone who's married with kids to be around other black people who are like that because you can't really necessarily always hang around single right. people because they don't quite understand right. what you're going through. 
And so that's what I really appreciate, you know, being around you guys. I'm like, okay, so they understand. So when you say, man, I got to do something for the kids, you guys really understand that, hey, it's not that I'm just making it up. You know what I mean? So, you know, just talking to you guys have just been, you know, so eye opening for me, you know, just being around you guys and inspiring me to do better and, you know, to grow as well. So what do you guys see for the future for, for Trap Art? Like, what do you guys see for the future? I know you talk about the festival, but something that's more of a short term goal, mid term goal, what do you guys see for the future for Trap Art? Um, I think that we are just going to try to get back to some of our key cities, um, that we weren't, that we had to stop during the pandemic. Um, so we're currently in Nashville and Memphis, which Tennessee is a really good market mm-hmm. for us. Um, we really like Tennessee. Tennessee likes us. Um, so so we just did an event in Nashville, actually, last Friday, last Saturday. Um, and we are mm-hmm. doing a New Year's Eve event there. Um, so we're working on nice. that. Um, and then Memphis will be in January. And then we'll be back in Oakland again. So I think just like getting back in the swing of doing in-person events um, is because it's been, mm-hmm. you know, we, we didn't do one for a very long time. And then we just had two in Oakland, which were awesome. And so just kind of getting back in the swing of doing those things. Um, and just, you know, I feel like with us, we're always thinking of new stuff. Like we just are. Like we're just like, and it's never usually planned I don't know we just kind of like think of stuff and be like let's do that I'm like okay let's do it and then we just do it um so I I feel like you know I'm always open to our creative ideas and trying new things um but I think just the most important thing is just you know continuing to grow the membership continuing to get the in-person events back rolling um and then just getting back to those like collaborative projects like photo shoots and other other collaborative efforts you know to get our members kind of working together again um and yeah i mean really besides that i feel like sky's the limit um we're we're always kind of just thinking of new things that we can do absolutely man i know this has been a a fantastic time talking to you i really appreciate you hopping on and you know showing us and telling us a lot a lot about the back end that what happens at trap art that a lot of people don't actually get to see and seeing how how much you guys have grown from, you know, just doing the parties and th- just having the inspiration of actually going from a Netflix documentary on Basquiat to to what you guys have now. Looking back on that, what's something that you think you can tell yourself, you know, the younger you in the beginning? What would you tell yourself something like, hey, the you now telling the twenty, the early twenty something you, what to do then that you know now? Um, I feel like the quote that I love that I like live by is from finding Dory, uh, just keep swimming. Um, (laughs) I feel like, (laughs) you know, there were probably times in the beginning where like, a I didn't know what this was going to be. Like we were essentially party promoters. Like that was what we were doing and it was cool. Like, I mean, it definitely was up and down and really stressful at times because every party that we threw wasn't amazing. Like every party wasn't well populated, you know, every party we didn't make a lot of money at and it's not and it you know it's obviously not all about that but it's like we are we don't a lot of times people are like people will ask us like oh like so do you have like a day job and we're like no <laughs> this is it you know so <laughs> it's what i do this is my day job um so i feel like just kind of keep swimming and just and just you know have faith that you'll you'll continue to create um amazing things and continue to be creative and intentional about what you want um, and I think that's just something that would have been reassuring to the younger me. <laughs> and um, if someone wanted to like follow in you guys' footsteps and wanted to create something similar to or something different, what, how would you? What kind of what kind of advice would you give them if they want to kind of get into the industry of the the nightlife or the party, you know, party promoting side of the business? Like, what is something that you can give them some tips or some tricks or some advice that you can give them? You know, if they're just like yeah, I mean, the first thing I would say is like, don't think you have to spend tons of money to do an event. Um, I feel like a lot of venues and like it's, it's very tricky, you know. Um, They'll be like, oh, yeah, you need to pay us 10K, and then you're going to need this, and you're going to need that. And I feel like if most people do that, they're going to throw one party and then be like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> that's crazy, you know. So I feel like, you know, keeping your expenses low. Um, and I feel like just, um, you know, having faith in yourself that, like, you know, you can dust your shoulders off and get back up, you know, if things don't work out the way that you went the first time. Um 
and kind of having, I mean, you should, you should definitely have expectations in business, um, but you should be able to be flexible with your expectations. Cause I think that if like, you know, you try to plan everything so meticulously, um, you're going to mm-hmm. get disappointed. So I think just like, you know, trying to keep your expenses low, being persistent, um, and also being consistent. So I think those are probably my, my main things. Awesome. I like the quote, keep swimming. You know, we hear that and you don't really think about it, but it's just as simple as that. Just keep going. You never don't stop. Like, is it like, like Nip said, it's yeah. a marathon. Just keep going. And it, you never know where you're going to be. So man, just to go ahead and wrap this up with the, the wonderful Amina, you know, the co-founder of Trap Art, you know, are there anything that you want to plug anything that you want to talk about before we get out of here, you know, also in, uh, plug your socials and all the trap art things so they let them know what the upcoming events they got going on or just yeah, whatever. Definitely. So, um, our Instagram is trap X art. Um, the X is silent, but it is there. <laughs> so trap X art, our website is trap X art or Twitter's trap X art. Um, for those of you who are still on Facebook, Facebook trap X art, um, and my personal is just Amina Brooks. It's just my name. Uh, no spaces, no underscores. Um, and then as far as what's coming up, um, so you can stay tuned for our magazine. It releases monthly. Um, it's available on our website, just trafficsart.com backslash magazine, and also from the homepage. Um, we are going to continue to add more cities uh, for in-person events, but currently we have Oakland. We have Nashville and Memphis. Um we are going to be working on more creative shoots. So we're definitely encouraging, you know, people that are interested in being part of a community to join the membership program. Um, there's a lot of benefits involved, like I explained earlier. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, a community to be part of where you can feel supported and meet other like-minded people and, you know, be able to brand and promote yourself, then, you know, become a member. And other than that, I just want everyone to keep doing whatever they are doing that makes them happy awesome that's so dope i really appreciate you coming on i really appreciate the husband the hubby lending you you know giving you the um, the free time away from the kids and away from him at the moment to come in and speak to me and speak to the people and give them some of those wonderful gems so with that man i want to go ahead and wrap it up like i always say man it's collaboration over competition you know always be inspired and bet on yourself you know, each and every day you wake up, you should be chasing your dreams because if you're not chasing your dreams, you're going to be getting up and you're going to be making somebody else rich and you're going to be making somebody else, you know, money when you couldn't be doing it for yourself. So with that, it's your boy Frank Nitty. I'm out.